Hello, I'm Jenny with GoBox Art Crate, and I'm coming to you today to teach a fun little lovebirds painting just in time for Valentine's Day. This video was made specifically for fossil distance learning program grades K through three, but I put it on YouTube so anyone can paint along with it, no matter how old or young you are. And I hope you have fun, but I will reference a lot of things that came in the fossil distance learning kit, which you can buy on our website, vango.com. So let's take a look at what we're painting. So I have made these cute little lovebirds. Actually it was designed by my artist Sabrina from my uh, paint studio. And I just tweaked it a little bit for this particular class. I think it's so cute. I love how they make a heart shape here. Their heads make a heart shape. And then we've got little heart shaped leaves, but I did do another version first where I painted green leaves. I'll show you that, I've got it right here. So that's an option too, if you like the look of the green leaves. And I even made one into a heart shape just to see how it looks. So yeah, you can see the difference. Maybe do a little combination of the two, whatever you like. I'm gonna guide you through and I want you to be creative and do your own thing too. So I'll set this aside, but I will reference it throughout. Let's have a look at our supplies. So your paint kit came with your paint bottles. We have these four colors, which I think are very vibrant and fun. And uh, these are, so we have black and white. We have green apple and bright red. We do a little bit of color mixing. We don't use a ton of black. I put way too much on here and I won't use that much at all. And then you have a 10 pack of brushes. These are for sale on our website for $5 a set. If you guys, any of you guys doing it outside of the school program need brushes. Mainly for this painting, I'm probably gonna use three brushes. A big one here, then one of the medium flat ones, and then probably one of the little pointy ones. But I will, I'll tell you what to use. Let me scoot this over. Everything want it, is wanting to roll off. But I want to start off with a smaller brush just to draw um, the things that get us started. So let's see here, let's pick up Let's pick up one of these. Eh, let's pick up a little pointy one. I picked up number five. It doesn't matter. You could just find one that's just round and pointy and small. And let's go ahead and dip it in the water cup. Brush it lightly across the bottom of the cup. And yes, you will want a cup or some kind of old mug, something you can put some water in for cleaning your brushes. And then an old paint rag or a paper towel. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> They're important things to have for this painting. So first we're gonna, we're actually gonna divide the canvas with a dotted line and then we draw this heart shape and then the birds just sort of form from that. So let's mix a pink color. So to make pink, you're gonna mix white and a little bit of red. Now the red will overpower pretty quick. So I just gradually mix the red in until I get a color I like. Just kind of a soft medium pink here. We don't need a ton of this color at first, just enough to draw a few shapes with. So now I'm gonna take my brush in this color and I'm actually gonna draw a dotted line that divides the top from the bottom. This gets completely covered up, but you'll probably like to have it. And see, it, it can be completely imperfect <laughs> like mine is. Just something you can see that will divide the canvases in half. This will just help us set our birds there. So I'm just gonna scoot these. Oh, this is the second time this has happened today. This brush just wants to have its handle be black. Okay, so now we'll draw the bird faces. Now it's it's not a big heart, so let's let's think of this instead of think just completely wash away all the birds and just think about this heart because that's all we need to worry about at the moment. And it doesn't even have to be fuzzy yet. So Right about here, I'm gonna come out and do half a heart. And you can make it wider if you think, oh, it's too narrow. So you have to, you have to think, we're gonna paint a face on here. So this is what I usually do. I'll just kind of widen it out a bit. And then this one's gonna match as close as you can. It doesn't have to be exact because they are two different birds. They can be, uh, they can be a little, asymmetrical. <laughs> Most of the time that's what happens with painting anyway. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually fill that in solid while we've got the pink on here. Let's wash this brush. And just set it aside. Now I'm gonna pick up a medium brush. 
So one of these little flat ones, there's one I really liked. Uh, this is the number four, number four bright. So bright is when the, the, the bristles kind of curve in a little bit, like they're angled in a little bit. I like this one, I don't know why. So pink paint, let's fill these in, solid. Your brush strokes right here don't really matter. It's supposed to be bird feathers, so short choppy ones work, but it's not really a big deal. We go back later and sort of feather their faces out a bit. So for right now, I'm just feeling, feeling like a villain. <laughs> Filling these paint shapes in. And I already need to mix more paint. I never mix quite enough. So I just try to eyeball and get it to be about the same color. I'll just hold the brush up. Does it match? Yes, it matches. Okay, matches good enough. Okay, now we've got a valentine, look at that. <laughs> you can just leave it like this and you've got an abstract valentine, but we're gonna take it further. I'm gonna wash this brush off. And I know our birds are actually green, but because the background is pink, I'm actually gonna sketch them in pink and then everything gets covered up over the top of that. But I want to make a lighter pink because I want to be able to cover it up easily. And covering up red base color with green can sometimes uh, be a little difficult. It can be a little bit see-through. So we want to make a really pale pink. So let's take one of our little round brushes. I'll just grab that last one I worked with. I think it was number five. And let's mix a little white into a corner of this pink and make a really light pink. You want to be able to see it on the canvas, but it's not going to be as dark as this is. Okay, so what I'm gonna have us do now is we're actually gonna draw the bird shape and they're a very easy shape as long as you just follow along with me. So let's have a look first. We're gonna go up around the top of the head and then this is gonna bump out for the wing and this is gonna be the right under here, the belly is gonna bump out and then it comes to this little point. So it's kind of a fat little short bird. They're very cute that way. So let's start right at this dotted line come up like you're just kind of mimicking the heart shape right now. And then as you get around here, it's gonna go outward a little bit more. And right here, I'm gonna bump out for the wing. So look, I just made this little And then right here, I bend out for the belly. And then this is just gonna connect with the cute little point. So there, and I can, easily kind of shape things out differently if needed. So you're not completely locked into what you just painted. You can change the shape and that's why I had to make this really light color. And now this one's, we're gonna sort of mirror image that as close as possible. It doesn't have to be exact because they are two different birds. So right about here, I bumped out for the wing. Before I get too far, I like to do the belly so then I know they're gonna meet up. Belly rounds out. And I'll round this one out some more. Then I work on this one. You just kind of go back and forth until they meet up into a little point. There. So they're not exact. They're just kind of close enough and that works. Just washing the brush because we're going to paint the background in now. And um, we want to use a bigger brush for that. So we've got our bird shapes on there and they look cute. Maybe yours are up higher than mine. Maybe they're down lower. Maybe they're bigger. Maybe they're smaller. It really doesn't matter. It's your painting. So let's take one of our bigger flat brushes. Let's see. What is this one? It doesn't have a number. It's just a little flat. I mean, a, a, your largest flat brush here. I wanna make this color again or something pretty close to it, but you're going to need quite a lot of this for the background. And it doesn't have to be exact. 
You can make a lighter pink if you want. We want to make sure we can cover this dotted line though. And when I mix this, I like to have it paint on kind of streaky so it has this almost cloud-like look to it. So I don't even over mix this. Here, I'll hold this up. You can kind of see it's just sort of a marbled mix. So I'm not gonna like stir and stir and stir till I have one solid color. I like to just blot my brush in. So then I have more of like a marbled color where there's streaks of pink and streaks of white. Now what I'll do is I'm just gonna paint the background. My brush strokes are choppy, sort of all over the place like this. You want to cover all the white canvas. You're going to leave your birds white. And if you like the look of maybe the idea that, that this is a very pink cloudy sky, one thing that you can do as you paint along, this is a very simple way to suggest clouds in a sky. Let your brush kind of run out of paint of whatever color you're using. Dip it in the white and then just flick some white in there. and I don't over mix it on the canvas. And then it, it sort of suggests clouds. And then I'll go back to my regular color, do that for a while. And you can also do this with the red. So if you look at a cloudy sky, you know you sometimes see darker grays mixed with lighter grays mixed with white. So we're doing all that with pink. So I'll sometimes maybe take a little red and do just what I did with the white. So you kind of mimic the idea of a cloudy sky. Just rotate through those colors, your base pink, some white, maybe a little red, and you can make it how you like it. As you get around the birds, we want to be a little bit careful so that we don't paint into them too much because we are covering them in a lighter color. So I, a lot of times I'll use the thin edge of this brush to get around some of these curvy edges. And it might be easier for you to just paint a border around your birds first, like I'm doing right now. See how I've kind of bordered this guy off? And then you can freely paint the background. <laughs> so find what works for you and stick with it. But you do wanna make sure that you get all the white canvas covered. Sometimes you might see little speckles of white canvas showing through, not white paint, white canvas. And that's, that's where I like to load on some paint. And as far as the edges, these canvases wrap all the way around and the staples are on the back like this, which is nice because then you can hang it up on the wall without staples on the edges. But you can paint the sides when we're all done. That can be like the last thing you do after your tutorial's over because you're just gonna take this pink and wrap it around the edges. It's real easy unless you wanna do something fancy and maybe paint your edges green or something like that. I like doing these choppy backgrounds like this. They're forgiving and they're easy and kind of satisfying. And you can just sort of morph it into what you want and everything can be painted over. So like, let's say I got all done with this painting and I decided, you know, I really want a black background. I could completely paint over the background with black, but I'm not gonna do that because I want this to be kind of a sweet little springy, Springy little lovebird scene. <laughs> Whoa, there's a dark patch of red. So if you do that, like I just did, you'll want to kind of blend it into this color. So a lot of times what I'll do is just scrape off some of that color and brush it over the top. And if that's not light enough, I'll take a little white. And it's just like you're mixing color like you do on here, but you're mixing it on your canvas. A lot of artists like to paint that way for their whole painting.
getting there. I got one little last corner to fill. And if you run out of paint, just mix some more as needed. Just using the thin edge of my brush to border off around this bird. Your arm might start getting a little tired. Once we get this background done, you're not gonna be doing so much aggressive work. So your arm will be less tired, but sometimes painting the background can really fatigue your wrist and arm. And you need to rest. You know, you can do that because the background is so simple. If it's really bothering you and you wanna finish the background later, you can totally paint the birds with me and then go back and do the background after the video. And that works too if you're struggling to catch up. You know, it's, a lot of us are gonna paint at different, different times. Some people paint really fast and others take it slower. Doesn't matter at all. This is already drying over here. So see how this spot right here is really light on mine? That's kind of a neat thing that like a person could leave in their painting. And what that looks like is yes, you've got a cloudy sky, but the sun is behind this part. So it's a lot brighter and lighter through there. And a lot of artists will do that just to, uh, then they, they have a nice visible light source. So when they uh, put highlights on whatever it is they're painting, they know that all the highlights are going to be like on this side, because that's where the light source is coming in. And it can also make your cloudy sky look real pretty. Another thing you could do is you could, uh, when this is all done, you could you could paint like a, a round sun or moon, whatever you want it to be. That's always kind of fun. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It looks really strange, doesn't it? If you didn't know we were painting birds, what would you think? We've got a weird mustache. <laughs> Look right here, the mustache. Funny, okay, let's wash our brush. This should be dry, mostly dry. Like if I rub my fingers all over it, I can tell it's dry. Yay, I want it to be dry. If it's still wet, for yours, like maybe you used a little bit thicker paint than I did, or maybe your room is a different temperature than mine is. That all affects how fast the paint dries. Um, just the next step we do, I want you to, if this is still wet, I want you to just be a little careful around the edges and I'll talk about that in a minute. So we are going to mix our bird color and I will bring the original back over here. So I have kind of a light green and then the birds are actually outlined in this green. So we're gonna mix white with this to make this lighter green. And then when we outline them later, we're gonna use just the green apple color. And let's have a look. My white is starting to get polluted with the pink. I do have some clean white over on this side. So I'm going to, I wanna keep the green and red from mixing because they make kind of a muddy color. So I'm gonna pull my fresh white from this side when I mix the colors. So let's do that. Let's take one of our bigger brushes, clean it off, dry it off, and I'll scrape off some white from a clean corner, plop it down over here. And now I'm gonna scrape off from the corner of the green, some green. Mix it up until you get a lighter green that you like. Now you want it to definitely be lighter than that is so that your outline will show up later. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll hold my brush up. Yes, they're two very different colors. You can see right there. So now I know I'm fine with this, this bright light celery green color. 
Now, again, if this is still wet, you want to be careful. So just come right up to the edges. See how I'm using the, the thin edge of my brush and just come in real close up in there. Mine is dry, so I could very, like I could just be not so careful through here, but I'm doing this just for those of you who still have this area wet. So I'm just concentrating on the body of the bird, not really going around the edges quite yet because we want this to dry some more too. This is such a pretty color, I love it. We're gonna switch to a smaller brush to get around some of these other parts, but for doing the large main part of the bird, let's use this larger brush. Same thing over here. I do wanna show you guys the video I did right before this one was for the uh, grades four through eight, but honestly, any, any kiddo could do it or adult. And it was this one, it uses the same color palette. This one's just called Love Bugs. And they, I love how they make a heart shape too. Both were designed for Valentine's Day. You can do that one. Uh, you should have enough paint left over in your kit because these little bottles hold quite enough. I've done about four paintings out of one bottle, stretching it a little bit, but <laughs> you can. Um, and you can use paper if you don't have canvas. The paint will paint right on paper. The paper tends to curl up and warp a little bit, so cardboard might work a bit better, but maybe you have a piece of wood you want to paint on or something. You can totally do that. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I want to switch to a smaller brush. So I will just wash this big one off. Your water is probably turning all kinds of special colors right now. You could look at it, but don't drink it. <laughs> It would not taste good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to this flat brush. I think this is the one that we, I don't know if we did anything with this one yet. Number four is what's, what mine is. It doesn't matter. Just pick one of your little medium flat brushes. Same color. Now we'll just go around the top of the head. I use the thin edge of the brush to trace along. And same over here. Later on, we're gonna fluff this pink out into the body a bit so it looks more like feathers. And if you need to get close with a smaller brush through here, you can do that now. So when I am painting around the edges, I am switching and using the thin edge of my brush because it gives me a nice skinny line. And for painting against the background that's and outlining something, that works great. All right. Next, this bird. Same thing, use the thin edge of your brush to trace along. If you've still got dotted line showing through, let this dry as you work on other parts throughout the painting and then come back and give it another little coat of paint and that should help cover it if you were a little aggressive with your dotted outline. I managed to get mine covered up. But it was a, could, I can sometimes paint a little aggressively too. I am running out of paint, but I think I might have enough to finish filling the burden. We'll see. If you need to mix more paint, again, just you've got your pool of color right here so you can mix like on this side and that way you can match it up. Or you can hold your brush up and make sure they match. I think I need just a little bit more.
So remember, we do outline the birds later with a darker green. So they'll stand out nicely against the background. Okay, now we need to give these birds separate identities because right now they're kind of conjoined there in the middle. And what we'll do in order to do that is when we outline the bird, this one's going to come in front. You can see this one's a little bit more in front of that one. And uh, that's going to be the best way to divide these two. I think I want to wait just a bit to do that though, because when I do the green outline, I want to do it all at once. And obviously these are still too wet. So what would happen is if I tried to outline it now, the uh, paint wouldn't stick because this is too wet. And that's how acrylic paint works. If you try to do a second coat or add more paint on top to outline or something, if the paint is too wet, it just pushes that first coat of paint around and doesn't stick. It's a really annoying thing. I'm just going to say that. But... It dries fast, so that's the nice thing. I think right now uh, this would be a good time for us to, uh, while we're sort of waiting for everything to dry, I have these little white dots all over in the background. And if you want to think of these as stars, that's fine. I My intent for these was I thought, you know, this might be like one of those spring days where you've got like all kinds of little things blowing around, those things that make you sneeze. Maybe someone picked up one of those dandelion puffs and blew it all over. So that's what I'm thinking of it as. So I want to pick one of my tiniest brushes. So I'm looking at the handle ends because that's what we're going to use to dot on the stars. I've got one right here that's got a nice point to it. This uh, is number two brush. And I'm going to actually stab, <laughs> stab the, the handful of the brush into the white paint. But you don't want to stab your canvas because you don't want to put a hole through this. It is a little bit delicate. You just are just going to do a little dot. Just stamp a tiny dot. You don't have to push hard at all. I feel like the handle of this one is almost too small. I'm going to go up a size. There. What am I using right now? Two slash zero. Just something that will give you... A little dot and you can paint as many of these in the background as you want. I did these with the ladybug painting as well. Let's show that fun. It's just a nice way to, to make the background more interesting than being just plain and it also allows some parts of this to dry without us just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. And if you want to do something different in the background than just dots, you totally can. You can paint little white hearts. It would take a little bit longer to do that. <laughs> you could um, paint little spirals or curly cues. That's the nice thing. It's your painting and you can do whatever you want. There's no rule that says it has to be exactly like mine. In fact, I prefer it if you guys are can be... Uh, make your own creative decisions. It's super good for you. Gives you some confidence. And then you learn along the way what works and what doesn't work. I mean, oh, that, that looked really good in that last painting, but that part didn't look so good. So I know that when I do a new painting, I'll avoid that and add that. So if you find that you are... Uh, making a polka dot pattern where every little dot is exactly the same space apart. I try to break that up by doing little clusters of dots. This is a technique I use for snowflakes too and stars. I think our heat in this room must have clicked off and it's starting to feel rather cold. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm painting more of a spring painting. Maybe looking at it will make me feel more warm. Almost. 
almost getting there. So I just have this little last patch to go. And then these, I can tell by looking at them, they're not really glossy anymore. So they're drying up nicely. Some colors dry a lot faster than others. And a lot of times it just depends on the brand of the paint. All right. Now, when you do finish the dots, make sure that you wipe the handle of your brush off. You don't want this to dry on there because then it will be a big glob. And next time you try to do something like this, you've got this big glob and it will make all kinds of misshapen dots. Um, if you are still working on this and you want to move ahead with me, this is the dots you already know how to do. So you can add them later after the video is all done. Very easy to do. If you're ready to move on with me, we'll go ahead and uh, start talking about outlining our birds. I think that uh, they're mostly dry. I can see a few little glossy spots, but that will be fine. That's not gonna cause any issue. Now you'll have to decide what brush you wanna use to outline. I'll probably pick one of these little round ones. You have a lot of them, and honestly, in this kit, a lot of them are very close to the same size. So just pick one that, that looks good to you. I, I like this number one brush. I'm gonna dip it in the dark green, so no mixing of colors, just plain old dark green. And I'm first gonna start by, I'm gonna outline this whole overall shape, and then we will divide one bird from the other. So I'll start up here, and just go right along the head and the back of the head, and then finally the back of the wing. And then you'll find that your brush tints are, these little brushes don't hold a lot of paint, so they're gonna start running out of paint after you just get, I don't know, two or three inches painted on, and then you have to redip it. That's just the way it goes. So you can see how much better it stands out against the background than that does. I love this color so much. There we go. Now let's do this one. Now, if you're right-handed like I am, working on the right bird is really easy, but working on the left bird is a little harder. It's like your, your hand is going in, in a direction that maybe doesn't feel quite as comfortable as this does. Sometimes what I'll do and, and this works too if you're left-handed. You might have a little harder time on the right, but easy time on the left. What I'll do sometimes is turn my canvas upside down, and then it's like I'm working on a right shape again. So you can do that. You can turn it upside down. <laughs> you can turn it this way. You can just turn it with every brush stroke you do to get it to where it's the most comfortable for outlining. Because then you'll do a little bit better job if it feels more comfortable. Wow, that looks funny. It looks like a butterfly, doesn't it? So there you go. If you decide you want a butterfly instead of the birds, <laughs> just flip your canvas upside down. But we're going to continue with the birds because they are way too cute. Now what I want to do is uh, let's divide the two from each other. Now this part, uh, don't, don't get too nervous about this. We're literally just going to meet this line with this line as I drag my finger through some white. Um, and I, I just slightly curve out. Now, obviously I don't want to curve too far out because then we would cover up the face of this one and also it wouldn't look right with the, the way this curves here. So let's look. I just did a really, it's almost flat. It's just a slight curve that meets up with the belly. 
So let's let's just go a little at a time. Start from the belly, working up. Get part way up there. Then let's go this guy. Bring the top of the head down. There we go. There. That's divided pretty good, and you'll be able to see part of that one's face and most of this one's face. But now you've got two bird shapes. Yay! And one thing that you can do later when we come back in, and I was telling you how we're going to fluff out the edges of this, like this is, see how it's nice and feathery and fluffy? You can use that pink and kind of reduce this line down if you feel like it's too harsh. Let's draw a wing on. So we only are uh, destroying like part of a wing. So I start right here and curve down and meet up with the tail. And then you can do a couple feathery lines here. And let's give this one a wing too. Few little feathery lines. Cute. Looking good. Looking good. Now they actually are starting to look like birds. I'm gonna wash my brush. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna work on the branch. So the branch is, I made a brown color and I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. It's called Everybody in the Pool, so what um, my painting partner calls it. And it's kind of true, all the colors in the pool just about. So let's, uh, let's pick one of our medium flat brushes. So this is number four for me. And we're gonna mix everything but white. So we're gonna mix green, red, and black, and we should get something sort of brownish. Now it will turn, the red's gonna turn it really reddish brown, but the green will turn it to be more of a muted brown. So you decide what you want. Let's first start, let's scrape off green. Let's scrape off about the same amount of red. Very close to the same amount. Let's see what we get there. It makes a, I don't know, it's almost like a brick color. Isn't that funny? Like green and red do that. And then take a little bit of black at a time. And you can stir bits of black in until you get a brown that you like. And if it feels too red, just add a little more green into it. If it feels too muted, you can add a bit more red to it. But it does make a nice branchy brown. <laughs> Here we go. It looks really dark on the camera, but it is like a brownish color in person. It's this color, let's see, yeah. Wow, I almost matched it exact. It almost has a slight purple tone to it. So let's let's talk about this branch. It's gonna come across from one side to the other. Now branches, as you know, if you look out at trees, they're always wavy and they're not perfectly angular and straight. They're always trying to fight to get to the sunlight. And then they often have little twigs that grow off of them that will be future branches. So I have this, it just curves down under the body of the bird and then we add feet later, the birds, I should say, and it goes off the canvas. So let's use the thin edge of this brush and let's start, like kind of try to line it up with the bottom of the bird. So just sort of hover my brush over till I get over here. And you can try, purposely make it a little wobbly. So if your hand is a little shaky, that works in your favor. That's a good thing. And then I'm just gonna go off the canvas. So it starts off with a really skinny line. And when I designed this particular version of this painting, what I imagined was the tree was over here. So the branches are always way thicker where they grow out of the tree trunk. And then they get thinner on the outside edges. Otherwise they'd be too heavy and this part would break off. So you can see this is a bit thicker than that is. So I'll show you how to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop down about half an inch and make a mark. And then I'm gonna parallel this brush, I mean this, <laughs> parallel this branch 
But as I go along, I'm getting closer and closer to that top line. So you can see my distance here is a lot thicker, but it's a lot thinner through here. And that's what we want to do. So as we get to the end of this branch, it's thinner than it is here. It can be a little tricky, takes a little extra thought, but you can do it. And the nice thing is, is let's say this part ended up too thick. Well, all you do to balance that out is you make this part thicker. And now I've got this gap to fill in. And you can make your branches wobbly and knobby as you like. Sometimes I make mine a little too smooth, so I'll go in and I'll, I'll add little bumps and things. Now, if you need to switch down to a smaller round brush, especially if this is really small and you're having trouble with this one, right now I'm using the thin edge of this brush. But if you need to switch down, I'll just set that in the water. I'll pick one of these little round brushes, which these are detail brushes, and you can use those, any of those to fill in the smaller areas of this branch or to add little smaller knobby things. You can also do the occasional little broken twig like that. We don't want to do too many, so we don't want it to look like they're like sitting on this really sharp, <laughs> thorny, thorny thing. I don't, I don't think you would want that. Maybe you do. I don't know, but a couple of them is okay. <laughs> we do add some fun twigs coming off the bottom, and that allows us to make our heart-shaped leaves. So I'll guide you through that in a minute. Just finish up your main branch right now. Okay, now for painting the tiny branches that come down off of this, I want to actually add a drop of water to my paint. So I'm gonna dip this brush in the water and then just stir some of that into the paint. You don't want it super watery, but you do want it thinned out just a bit. And then to keep, to make our uh, little twigs be nice and thin, if you don't push really hard when you paint this on. That's helpful. You can get a lot thinner line. So I'm going to come under here and make a little wobbly branch, like a tiny branch. And then I'll branch off of that. And you can add, you can add a third one too. It could maybe come off of here. So then I've got lots of fun areas to put the heart leaves. And then if you want, you can do another one over here. It could be on top, like, or I could, I could turn this into like branch that goes up. So that's kind of fun. And you can add another one here. There. Now our little birds have a support system. But they need faces. Yes, they need faces. So we are going to work on that next. This is coming along really good. We'll let our branch dry and then we'll be able to add feet later on too. So let's uh, finish up your little twigs. And then we're going to remix this color. Brush wise, I want to use one of my little flat brushes. And the one that I've kind of favorited today is this number four, the one that's the, the bristle sort of angle in. That's called a bright brush. I may have mentioned that earlier, but maybe it was in the other video. I'm just going to clean my brushes that are sitting in the water. So clean it off. Make sure that this little metal part, this is called the ferrule, and it holds the bristles to the handle. And make sure it's clean, dried off uh, with the water so that you don't end up with a little rogue drop of water because what happens is we're painting 
on something flat on the desk, the water will roll down and splat on your canvas and it can be a little bit of an annoyance. So I try to avoid that by drying that off. Let's mix our pink. So I've got my dried little pool of paint here so I know what color I need to try and make. So we'll do white, less red than white, for, for this color anyway. The red really will overpower that white right away. So I always just add bits of it at a time. This looks pretty close. I think I've got it. And now we're going to do what I talked about earlier where we sort of fluff out the feathery faces. And this is where you can make the faces bigger. Like this one, I feel like this one will have a, a face that really has to be squeezed in tight, but I've got a lot of room around here. So that's where I could make this face a lot bigger and then she'll have room to have more of a face. So what I like to do is use the thin edge of this brush and just flick outward and upward as we go around this heart shape. And I'm just gradually making this face a bit bigger. It's almost like we're adding Muppet hair. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of, little stuffed animal hair or something. And as we get around this heart, see how I'm starting to go that way? So I go upward and then I'm gonna go sideways and then down here I'm gonna go downward. And if your pink that you're doing right now isn't the exact shade as that is, you can brush it inward and kind of just blend the two together. And now this one needs the fancy treatment also. A little trip to the hair salon. And this is where you can uh, reduce the, the size, the thickness of that green dividing line between the two birds if needed. You may not need to. If you feel like you need to use a smaller brush for this, maybe like the thin edge of this isn't working so great for you, definitely just pick up one of your little brushes. You've got 10 to choose from. Oh, one thing I just realized, I put Fun little blushy cheeks on these guys. Very nice. Very nice. All right. I'm trying to decide what I want to have us do next. It just kind of depends. Could do the heart leaves. Mm -hmm. You know what, I'm gonna actually have us do the eyes because they'll need to dry. The eyes and the beak will need to dry before we add white highlights. So if we do them now, then we can work on the leaves and then we'll go back and they'll be nice and dry and ready for highlights. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's have a look at our beak color. So our beak color is just a lighter version of this. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually going to scrape off what I have left of this dark branch color, and I'm gonna mix it with the pink until I get a lighter version of that. That's what color I painted the beak in. Now if you wanted to do the beak in black or some other color, maybe a darker pink, you absolutely can but I'll just go ahead and use this color. Maybe I'll add a tiny bit more red to it. I always think of birds as having orange beaks, even though <laughs> they're all, all kinds of different colors. It's just funny. I don't know why. Okay. Let's, uh, let's paint the eyes and then we'll paint the beak. So we place the eyes and we know where to place the beak. So let's pick up a tiny brush. One of your littlest pointy ones. And let's have a look at these eyes. I toyed around with different eye shapes. The original version of this painting, they had big round 
staring eyes and they were very cute. But um, I opted to go with what I call sunshine eyes. <laughs> they just look like they're smiling. The eyes themselves are smiling. So uh, I love that the look of those. And you can do whatever kind of eyes you want if you want to do. I even did, I did little round black eyes and I painted over them. I didn't like it. We, we ended up with this. So let's, uh, if you want to do this, I'll teach you how to do it. So take your little brush, dip it in black. And we're sort of looking at, this isn't a front on view of the bird. So the faces are going to be sort of squished inward. So rather than being right out here, they're going to be closer to the inside edge. They're going to be closer to each other. And what I like to do is make little tiny marker dots. So at first it's going to look really funny because our birds are going to have really tiny eyes. But I'll put one really close to here, really close to that center line. So I'm doing a little non-committal dot. If you do a tiny dot like this, you can easily paint over it after it dries. So we're, I'm being safe here. And now I'm going to go over maybe about an inch right about there make another look at that that looks really funny <laughs> and then this same for this one so it's going to have an eye pretty close to that other this one's eye and then one about an inch away <laughs> I promise they'll get better unless you like them like this you can leave them like this okay so now I'm going to turn these into little rainbow shapes so I just do a little arch And you can make them, just gradually make them a little bit bigger. And I just try to match them up. Now with this one. Just a little rainbow shape, little arch. This one can go partly behind the other bird, too, if you run out of room. If you want to give eyelashes, you can. Just be careful because uh, they need to be pretty thin. <laughs> so use very little pressure and very little black paint on your brush. But uh, if you feel like doing eyelashes, I say go for it. I'm going to wash the brush now so that I can paint the beak on in that other color we mixed right here, which is drying up quickly. And I put the beak really close. Like at first I had it down here and it, the faces just looked too long and not cute enough. So I put the beak like right in between their eyes. So we'll do the same thing we did where we make the little marker point. So I'll just do a little dot in between each of their eyes. And then this side's going to curve a bit. So in this side will be opposite. It's going to curve a little bit too. And we're going to turn that into a beak. But you know what? I need a little more paint because this is drying so fast. Let me just mix some real quick. Well colors close enough. Okay, so we have these funny little curves. And now I'm going to you're going to go straight across the top. And then this side is going to match the curve. So you've almost got like a half moon or like a crescent moon shape. But each one is pointing towards each other. Oh, they're so cute. And after they dry, see how I've got the little spots of blush? We'll do that. We'll put some white feathery lines and highlights. But let's do the hearts. Unless you want to do leaves. Here's the other one. See, I didn't get, so, it didn't get as far enough with highlighting the eyes on this one. But I wanted to show the green leaves. These are just uh, kind of almond shapes. Or you can do heart shapes. You could do a combination of red and green. I want to use a small brush, one of the little pointies. What do I have in the water? And I'll use, what am I using? Just so you guys know. 
number one. And there, one of my brush handles decided to take a bath in the black again. This is the third time that it's happened today, just so you know. <laughs> just determined to roll in the black paint. Okay, so I'm gonna use red and do the little red hearts. Now up here for these ones, like on this one, I don't have any branches that face upward. So all my hearts are like the normal facing. This one, you can do an upside down heart. So it's like a leaf. And then over here, same thing, a little upside down. And they can be different sizes. Like one could be bigger than the other. Scoot this up here. And now for these, like sometimes you might end up with a heart on its side. <laughs> these are not the easiest little shapes to draw when they're so small. Sometimes you might want to turn your canvas because then it feels more like you're drawing an upright heart and it's easier on your brain. And your hand. I always forget to make them different sizes. So it might always end up really uniform. Okay, I'm gonna force myself to do a really tiny one right here because I keep making them all the same size. Oh, that's so cute. Ah, uh, looks like I could even put one right here. Yay, that turned out cute. You could even make some random hearts that are not attached to branches, like maybe a spring wind has come through and grabbed a few hearts and blown them off the tree. We do put one right in between the two birds. I kind of made it elongated and um, not symmetrical, but you can make a perfect heart if you want. And you can make it a diff different size than I did. Actually, it would have been cute to give them hearts for eyes. <laughs> They're so in love with each other that their eyes are turned to hearts. One thing, like, I could do multiple of these. I think that's kind of cute. Like, oh, so much love is going on here. Love birds. There, that's fun. Here's the difference. You could do a single heart. That's cute too. Or you can go crazy. All right. Let's finish those up. Then we'll get some blush on the cheeks of the birds. Let's have a look at what that looks like again. Oh, that's cute. Very cute. My favorite way to do something like that that's smudged in, like, let me hold this up here. You see how it's really smudged in? It's not like, uh, it's, it's not painted on with a brush. I actually used my fingertip, but you want to use very little paint because we don't want... It's really easy to, if you have a lot of paint on your finger, it's really easy to suddenly have this humongous circle that takes over everything. And we don't want that for this particular part. So I'll show you the easiest way to do it. All right, so you wanna take your one of your little brushes. 
We're going to dip the handle in the red. Just pick up a tiny dot of red, and then you're going to take and dip your fingertip. You only want about that much paint on it. See that? Not much at all. And then I'll go right under the eye, and I am just going to work my finger around in a circle. And then I'll do the other one. Maybe a smaller dot if you can manage it, because this one's going to be real close to the side of the other one's face. And now this birdie, oh, this one's really blushing. And a smaller dot if you can manage it for right over here because we have just a small space to work with. And then make sure you wipe the handle of your brush off. Now the cool thing with this is if you felt like, ah, that got out of control and it looks like its face is bleeding or something like that, you can take your one of your larger, like your medium sized brushes, go to the pink, this color pink, and you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. You can sort of smudge these out with just a tiny, tiny bit of pink on your brush. So see how I softened it out a lot? And it's only gonna work if you have a very small amount of paint on your brush. So it's still there, it's still visible, but it's not such a vibrant red, it's more subtle. And that's just your personal preference. You might like it really red. It, it's cute, really red. I was just showing you how to, how to change it if you wanted to. We're almost done with this. Let's do some highlighting and some feathers on the face. So let's, uh, let's do the highlighting first. We'll take our little brush, one of your little round ones, dip the, hand, this time we're using the bristles. You dip the very tip of the bristles in white. So you can see I, I didn't pick up much white. See that tiny little dot on the end of the bristles? That's what you want. Now let's go on the, the beak. We're going to highlight the left side of this beak. So the side that's facing that bird. And this one, this bird, we're going to highlight the side that's facing the other bird. Just a little slash of white paint. As little as you can manage. And then I just put a little white dot in each eye, just like a highlight. And if you don't like the look of this when it's done, you can always let this white dot dry and then go back and just paint black back over. <laughs> Cute. Now I like to, when I got done with this, I felt like the faces needed something else. And so what I did is I, I made a really light pink and you can see I gave them little feathery beard <laughs> looking things. So you want the pink to be lighter than this. You could almost even get away with just using white, but I'm gonna grab some white. I've got some wet pink paint here. Just use the same brush. So I made a, a lighter version of this color and then Maybe I'll add a drop of water to that because I don't have a lot of paint here. So the drop of water will help it move along a bit. So then I'm just painting some little feathery, some feathery texture on the face just to break up that big mass of pink. And it's, it keeps it where it's still making the heart shape. But it's kind of softening it up and breaking it up a bit. So I'll hold that up. You can kind of see what I'm doing. My brush is rolling off. Ah, stay. Okay. You can go up on the forehead a bit too. So if I were to use white, you can see it's just a little brighter. So pick what you like. Maybe do a combo of both. And again, the nice thing is if you don't like the way it looks with this, mix up your same pink and just go around the edges carefully and, and cover it back up. Now we just need to highlight the birds themselves and we'll be done. Let me show you their highlights. So I did a little white shine on the tops of their heads, the back of their wings and their bellies. You can see the difference. I like it with the highlights. 
Brush wise, one of your small brushes, I'm going to use this little flat number four and I'm going to use the thin edge of it, which means I'm going to turn the brush and use this, use the skinniest edge. So I'll take and dip it in white. And you know what I'm going to do first before I touch the birds with it? I'm going to brush some of that white back onto my palette because that will knock off some excess so I don't have too much. And I'll start with a wing because it's just an easy spot. Oh, I wiped too much paint off. So we'll just come down along the back of the wing. And let's do the belly too. I'm using the thin edge of the brush. Top of that, if you have room. You might not have a lot of room here. Now back of the wing on this side, you can go over some of your feathery lines that you drew in there. The so highlight would, would highlight that too. Top of the head, and finally the little belly. Oh, we need feet. I just realized that. I'm like, something's missing, but what is it? Feet. You guys can't just hover there, you need feet. The feet are super simple and they're really small. Let me hold this up so that you can see them. I know that it's, they're so dark and the branch is so dark, they're kind of hard to see. If you want to do feet in white, or green, you totally could. You know, I'm gonna do them in green just to be different. So I'm gonna take my little round brush. We're gonna use the bristle in, dip it in whatever color you're gonna use, black or green or white or pink, whatever you want. And I just do right under the bird, three little claws and the feet are tiny. They're like ridiculously tiny. Now birds do have really small feet compared to the size of their bodies, but these are really small. They do have legs, these birds. They're just folded up. They have that way of folding their legs up. So there, I would feet on one. And now these, this one's feet are gonna curve towards, so see how these curve that way, just like the beak does? These ones are gonna curve that way. One, two, three. You can count it out if you want. One, two, three. Oh, that one has long toes. You can even give it red toenail polish. That's it. I just need to sign the painting and I'm all done. Unless you want to add anything else, your own little personal touch, which you can totally do. I'm going to use green to sign it. And I just put my initials in one of the lower corners. But artists sign their names different ways. Some of the famous artists, sometimes they just sign their first name, like Vincent Van Gogh, I think he just signed his with Vincent because he probably figured he was going to be the only Vincent who is an artist ever. <laughs> I don't know. But I just do my initials. You can do whatever you want. There we go. Our lovebirds are done. I hope you guys enjoyed painting this with me. I had a lot of fun. Sunshine is out. It's Saturday for me. I'm going to go outside for a bit. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for painting and we'll see you next time. Bye.